do legends really die in the NBA? Superstars get old, players reach their final contracts, and the league moves through new eras, leaving the past behind. But while players are missed, they're never forgotten, as future generations emulate their games. Today, we're talking about NBA superstars and the young players that are here to replace them, and where their careers seem to be heading. He's only 18. This is what they would have been saying about Kobe if social media was around in 96. But instead, in 2017, we got his only 19 for Jason Tatum. Watching this kid, this literal child, working grown men like Paul George and Drew Holiday, and you know who, Tatum drives down and throws it down! Wow! was like watching young Kobe throw down over two defenders. And not only their athleticism, their overall playstyle, being primary shot creators with defensive effort, playing next to certified superstars. We saw the tenacity, we saw the passion, we saw the mentality they both exuded. Then came the photo. The photo that solidified the he's only 19 claims, the he's next up claims, and Jason followed through with these hopes. As the Kyrie era of Boston came and went, Jason continued to a 16 point scorer, to a 23 point scorer, to a 27 point scorer, to leading his team to the NBA Finals after promising it to the spirit of Kobe, and now he's leading the MVP conversation. Every day we watch him pull off more and more Kobe-esque moves, from the way he uses his footwork with jabs and pumps to get to the rim, to his work in the mid-range, both shooting around 60% on unassisted two-pointers in their fifth seasons, to his defensive effort and rebounding, to the underrated playmaking with Kobe's 6 to Jason's 4, to his mentality, constantly improving and adapting. Every year he got more efficient, more points, less turnovers, more assists, just like Kobe did. Jason is only getting better and better and with the situation he's in, coming off a well-earned finals appearance, only getting better is leading him to a position among the all-time greats. This season is leading the MVP race, next season it could be a championship, the next season finals MVP. And from there, there's only a certain few that reach that company. Simplicity leads to mastery. This is true in almost all walks of life, but in basketball, that art is lost. The culture of tween tween hezzy step back can be effective for the upper echelon of players, yet for the rest of the league, it leads to failed and stagnant positions taking over the league. He dances, steps, fires another block, and then Okogi just took it from him in one motion and then ripped it the other way. LeBron James never fell into this trap. LeBron is direct, effective, efficient. He's always in control. He comes off a screen and looks straight for the rim or looks for a teammate. He keeps his game simple. Cade Cunningham is simple. As an unathletic 20 year old, his game is simply doing what needs to be done. Cade is wise beyond his years. Watching him break apart offenses with his playmaking, he capitalizes on his IQ and his decision making abilities. As an unathletic player, he isn't extremely flashy on ball. He may occasionally catch the body, but he excels in directing the offense. His ability to hit players with tight passes or use simple fakes to open up the right man opens up his chances by adding the threat of him finding chinks in defense. He exploits these chinks by being a versatile scorer. For his two point attempts, he shot 47% in total, and as the distance increases, he doesn't drag down dramatically either, even increasing from 16 feet. Him and LeBron are mid range specialists, so he doesn't exactly excel at spacing the floor, such as LeBron didn't for a good while in his career. But by playing off his bigs, he still manages to produce a bucket by using his IQ to scramble defenses to a point that a shot opens up. This is the foundation of his playstyle, and this translates to the defensive end as well. As unathletic as he is, he sticks with players, not falling for pumps and hezzies, and puts up heavy contests when he manages to get bumped off. The effort is the motto of his game. While people say LeBron doesn't put in effort anymore, we actively see K participate in every facet of the game. He leads his team with all that cluster, with effort and pride, so while he's not perfect, he's one of the most complete young players. Being this complete this early has produced stars like Damian Lillard, but the main limiting factor is the team he's on. The Pistons have a reputation for not being the most competent front office, and just like Damian Lillard, this can hurt his career in the long run. The path the team is heading on isn't the best, literally being last in the NBA. So the question is, will he stick it out and have a career like Damian Lillard, or will he stick it out and have a career like Kyrie Irving? Who changed the game of basketball the most? People argue Steph Curry with his high paced free ball centric style of play. People argue Magic Johnson revolutionising the point forward archetype, and people argue Allen Iverson with his expressive on and off court style which is seen in many young players today. But one player whose degree of how he affected the game is consistently overlooked is the dream himself, Hakeem Abdul Olajuwon. Revolutionising footwork at all positions started with Hakeem. Coming in, he was viewed higher than Michael Jordan, and this was for a valid reason. Hakeem was dominant. He was athletic, explosive, and is one of the most dominant bigs ever. In a time dominated by bigs like Shaquille O'Neal and Patrick Ewing, he stood out in almost every way. When you are drafted above the greatest player of all time, and no one calls it a dumb pick, it means you're something special. And something special he was. Transforming the game in the manner that he did, he moved in the post, not with an unstoppable force like Shaq, but with grace and finesse, using his body and pump face to create space easily, effortlessly, effectively. He didn't shy away from guarding his matches or camp in the paint waiting for a chance to block someone. 
He challenged the guards, keeping with them the entire possession, and still got the block. Joel is the spitting image of Hakeem, from his work in the post to his defensive effort to how he operates around his team. But specifically, on offense as the game has developed, Joel has developed alongside it, having some form of floor spacing ability, but he's most effective operating down low. At 7 foot 2 and almost 300 pounds, he moves so fluid. His combination of brute strength and technical grace allows him to play in his own stratosphere. The versatility he possesses as a 7 foot man allows him to create his own shot in a modern face up ball handling kind of manner, as well as harass other 7 footers in the post with decisive explosive moves, which is why he's led the league in points created in the post for the past 3 seasons, as well as been top 5 in post points in the entirety of his active career. This versatility lends itself well in the defensive end as well. Joel's athleticism allows him to contest fast breaks and recover weak side. His combination of offensive versatility and defensive prowess has made Joel Embiid the best centre in the league since he got off his minutes restriction. He was literally second in Defensive Player of the Year voting in his first active season and was second in MVP voting in the season just passed, arguably being the MVP. So an MVP, Defensive Player of the Year and possible Finals MVP season isn't out of the realm for him. And this is arguably the greatest season you can have. Injuries are a part of the game. Nonetheless, when it happens, they always hurt. But this time, it hurt the most. Left foot. Now, whether it was an ankle or a knee, I do not know. Yeah. There's Coach uh, Collins out there oh, and all those teammates oh, running. Good. And this, with the injury, we just talked oh, about the 26 games he has missed with an assortment of injuries and now holding a knee late in a game that is already decided for all intents and purposes. D. Rose had some of the most potential we've ever seen, being a crazy shifty athletic point guard with playmaking abilities and defensive potential. I mean, he became the youngest MVP for a reason. He was on the right track, going from number one pick in the 2011 NBA draft to the Eastern Conference Finals in less than four years, which is unheard of. But when it happened, it seemed as if another star had been snuffed out. Yet only seven short years later, another crazy athletic diamond in the rough was drafted. Ja Morant in four years has reached heights never expected of him winning Rookie of the Year against the most hyped prospect ever, being in the MVP conversation in his third season, being the best player on the best team in the league in his fourth season, he's found a path that was once lost to Derek. He's currently top 15 in points, top 10 in assists, just like Derek Rose did. Josh's shifty playstyle didn't just spawn out of nowhere, he emulates Derek beautifully. To simplify it, 1v1 or an offensive set, they're gonna get to the rim by any means possible and then make the toughest of tough shots. They're so explosive and shifty that as if by magic they just appear at the rim and then you know what's gonna happen. They'll rise. Now with these athletic monsters, what do you think will happen in transition? It's like looking into a thinner mirror. They're clutching, stepping up when the moment calls for them. Their IQ, being able to use their gravity to manipulate both defense and offense. Their leadership, putting their teams further than they were ever expected. We are literally witnessing what Derrick Rose could have become. But what could he have become? His MVP likely already solidifies him as a Hall of Famer. But with John on the cusp of a championship, whilst being an MVP level player, he could surpass the Jason Kidds, the Steve Nashes, maybe even the Chris Pauls in the all-time rankings and give us a glimpse of what superstar Derrick Rose could have been and the superstar Jar has become. I'll talk more about how Jar became a superstar in this video here, so click that if you want to see more about that topic. If you like the video, like the video. If you don't, don't. Subscribe if you want and I'm done. Okay, bye.